wire. That's what I get, wire for bracing. Now, what's easiest to get at? Control cables and the flaps. Perfect. It's using your beam, Lieutenant. Uh oh, I better take the chute to keep it dry. Lay the pole from the crotch of one tree to the other. Construct a framework of poles. Lean spruce or evergreen boughs against the sides, pointing the twigs downward. Patch the sides with brush. And then chink it with snow, banking it well at the bottom keep the wind from blowing in under it. If this storm keeps up, that's one job I won't have to do. You're not through yet. Pack down or brush out all snow on the inside. Make a mattress of pencil-thick spruce bough tips to insulate you from the ground. And with your fire in front of the opening, you'll have a comfortable wiki up. Conserve your matches. Don't smoke unless you get a light from the fire.
guess I'm pretty well set now. Practically all the comforts are home. Don't neglect cooking. Prepare two meals daily if food is available. Today's specialty, a nice hot plate of melted snow. As a matter of fact, improvise a utensil and melt snow if you have to. Drunk hot, it conserves and adds to body heat. I wish you had a recipe for boiled boots. Place metal to the side of the fire, not over it. I could at least have had hot chocolate if I'd have brought along a chocolate bar. Never eat snow without first warming it. It lowers body heat. That man in his snow. How does he want it? Room temperature? Wrap it in a cloth and at least warm it inside your pocket. I feel, old boy, that's not a very good idea for us absent-minded pilots. Warm only a small amount at a time. What I'd really like to know is what I'm going to use to warm myself tonight. Your parachute can be used as a sleeping bag. Ah, you're right in that old oven. Better have a dress rehearsal to see how this works. After all, it's not my regular nightshirt. Take care there's no snow on you or the chute. Then simply wind it around you. Leave enough material at the bottom to tuck around your feet and at the top to form a hood. Maybe I shouldn't sleep. Get plenty of sleep. You can survive many days without food if you relax. Your body is a good furnace. Good enough to keep me from freezing in my sleep? Cold will awaken you before you freeze, unless you're exhausted. And exhaustion comes from forcing yourself to keep awake or keep moving when rest and sleep should be taken. In cold regions, that is absolutely essential. You sold me. Moses, what's that? Wolves? The howl of wolves usually denotes nearness of game. Well, that's good. Maybe I eat tomorrow. Why didn't I bring my 45 or that over and under? Nearness of game. Maybe me? Generally, you have nothing to fear from wolves. Once they get the man scent, they won't attack unless you run. Just stand stock still. Mister, you stand stock still. If a pack of wolves come around to take census, they'll interview me from the top of the nearest tree. Stand still to escape wolves. Thrash around to drive sharks away. The things you gotta know to be a flyer. that the briefing officer said about taking an emergency kit. I'll sure know better next trip, if there is a next trip. Assuming he went down at a point midway between the last two radio checks, your best possibility is in this area. Right. Previet, uh, you searched the valley flats from Northway to Toke River. Uh, hold your altitude down to 800 feet, 
mark your flight line, and indicate any ground fog areas so that we can cover them later. Roger. Snazzy, you take the uh, area along the valley from Tok River. Brothers seem to be doing their share, and you're made of the same stuff. Mixed green and dry wood. I'll even feed you this good solid oil. Chew it up, nice and smoky. Satisfied, Mr. Briefing Officer? They're your universally recognized distress signals. Three smoke columns by day, three fires by night. I sure hope somebody comes around to admire them. Don't despair, even though weather conditions might delay rescue operations several days. Keep your fires going, even in overcast. You can almost be sure you'll be picked up if you make a determined effort to call yourself to the attention of searchers. Right now, I aim to catch me a rabbit. In snow country, rabbits can be snared with ridiculous ease. You can use safety wire. Look, man, I learned this one when I was a kid. In deep snow, rabbits must keep to their runs to avoid floundering. I know that. These runs, hard beaten paths in willow and alder clusters, are a good source of supply. You don't have to tell me. Just set a snare in the run. See, you do it this way. enough so that the rabbit is bound to head into the loop. I'll do more. I'll guide him through with this willow branch. Didn't know that one, did you? Visit it often to prevent the loss of any catch to other animals. Okay, later. First, I'm gonna dust off my plane so it can be spotted. You can sometimes fish successfully by melting a hole in the ice of a stream or lake. Yeah, but I haven't got a stream or a lake handy. Besides, it'd be too tough to keep a hole open. You build a fire on the ice. Make a line out of chute cord. And always boil fish if possible. All right, if possible. That takes care of that. To make your plane even more visible from the air, put bright colored or reflecting objects on the wings. There, that ought to be enough to attract them. Your radio may even be used after a crash landing. Radio, I forgot about that. Battery frozen solid. I could have kept it warm by the fire. Might have been able to get a spark through it. You could have gotten a spark from it, too, to start a fire if other methods failed. Well, I just have to take chances on the signals I have. You can tramp out the letters SOS in the snow and outline them with branches. Outline them with branches? That's a great idea. Glad I remembered that one. At night, if a plane's motors are heard, signal flares or landing flares or a very pistol can be used. If you have them. We're doing pretty good with what we do have, though. Continue to improve your camp. Don't just get by. Your degree of resourcefulness will determine the degree of your comfort. Make a windbreak for your shelter. Avoid snow blindness. Blacken your nose and cheeks with soot or charcoal. Or burn holes through half-inch pieces of wood or bark and fashion the eye shield around your head with cord, never metal. 
Never mind. I'll pull down my goggles when I have to. Continue to bring in wood. Deep breathing irritates your throat and causes chest pains. So cover your mouth and nose when you're exerted. But try not to be. Work easily and steadily rather than in spurts. Construct supports. Dry your clothes, socks, boots, sleeping bag. Take care that they cannot be burned or scorched. Strengthen and insulate your shelter well. Improvise snowshoes from willow branches and shoot cord. Now, let's see about using this. Shoes lead me to dinner. his country by being served to a guy who's serving his country. The inner bark of willow is edible. Rabbits can eat the bark. I'll eat the rabbits. Chunks of meat should be removed two minutes after the water boils to preserve essential vitamins. Eat meat rare and drink the juices. Don't worry, there'll be nothing left of this rabbit. I might even chew the bones. this for drinking. Hubcat to hub cup. Proud of me? Not bad for an amateur, huh? If forced to subsist more than a week on rabbit meat alone, extreme weakness results. Maybe so, but right now I feel strong enough to tramp out that SOS. Come join us, come join us, a bright happy band. By the strong arm of temperance, we've taken our stand. We don't smoke tobacco because we do think that all boys who smoke it
land. Drop it the next time around. <laughs> and hardy, they always call me. I'll keep snow out of there this time. Now, why didn't I bring that along? Or any of these things? Your emergency kit will explain itself. Common sense and ingenuity will determine how to extract its fullest advantages. Cold wrists cause cold hands. If you have plenty of extra socks, one pair can be made into wristlets by putting the fingers through holes cut in the toes. Gee, I could settle down here and set up a trading post. I sure think of everything. Now if they just top it off with a good shot of brandy. Do not drink liquor. It remains fluid at very low temperatures and will seriously rob the body of heat. Okay, but something tells me when I get out of this, I'm gonna get myself seriously robbed. Always make sure you dust snow from your clothing whenever you arise or lie down so it doesn't thaw and cause dampness. Feet, being the first part of the body to chill, should be nearest the fire. Even in severest cold, be sure you get sufficient oxygen when you sleep. Mister, in this cloud of dawn, smothering would be a pleasure. This is for me. From now on, I'm gonna carry around one of these like a tobacco pouch. And this is living. All I need now is... Why'd I ever pass up that little blonde in Edmonton?
happened? Artie! Are you all right? You want anything? Yes. Some pinup girls for these walls. <laughs> Come on, Hardy. Say it'd be better if we left you here to die. You're kidding us like that. Why, you old son. Remember these things well. Coal can maim worse than shell fire. Roger, Briefy. We'll go. Keep on pitching and preaching. Yes, Hardy, I will. But right now, I'd like you and all you Hardys to meet someone who also belongs in this picture. Someone who can do a little pitching and preaching of his own. Yes, I belong in this picture. I'm Pennington. And I've been through what you've seen. Only, I didn't know what to do.